And welcome back. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of July, 2023. This is the 26th episode in my van's RV8 fuel tank saga, but we're coming to an end. Uh, behind me, I have the right fuel tank. Today, I'm going to install the rear baffle and that will essentially close this thing and seal it up. There'll be very little that needs to be done after that, just uh, access plates and Z brackets. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and get into that. But before I do, I have an amateur tip for you. Pay attention. When it comes to working with ProSeal, in the first few days that you are working with sealant, don't put any thought or care into what you're wearing. The reason is when you get to the late stages of the game like this, and you're trying to get ready for the workday, you don't have to look for a shirt that's already messed up with ProSeal. Pretty much anything you grab out of the closet is already going to have Pro Seal on it. So it makes life a lot simpler when you're 26 days in. Anyways, <laughs> that's it for that. Uh, I'm going to do a little um, last minute cleanup on this and then go ahead, mix up a batch of sealant and put it on there. So should be fun. Let's build an airplane. Nothing new under the sun here. This is the same stuff that you saw me doing yesterday. Just a, a little better view, I suppose. Uh, you can see this stuff has been handled so much over and over again that it gets all kinds of finger marks and scratches and all that kind of stuff. So a once over with acetone uh, so that the sealant that I'm about to mix up can get a bite. Let's talk about that, um, that rivet puller. I went to Harbor Freight this morning to get another one. I ended up getting the exact same one. I had thought about maybe getting a, an inexpensive pneumatic rivet puller, but luckily for me, they were out of stock on those because it's not something that that I really need with this kit. There just aren't enough uh, pulled rivets on the RV-8 kit to really, I think, justify a good rivet, uh, a pneumatic rivet puller, and a cheap pneumatic rivet puller probably gave you cheap results. So um, the problem is not, was not, is not the rivet puller. The problem is with these particular types of um, closed end rivets, uh, at least in, in my experience, not every single rivet, just a bunch of them. Um, a little tiny piece of it will pull up and get stuck inside the nose piece of the rivet puller. So I got a second one. It's not an expensive one. It's a $10 rivet puller. And, uh, I just wanted to have a backup so that I wouldn't get stuck if just one of them completely failed and I wasn't able to pop that little piece of aluminum out. Um, so it was still a pain in the ass, but it just, it was a pain in the ass that worked out. I did three ounces of sealant and then struggled like crazy to get my top layer of gloves off. <laughs> um, and here, just like the other tank, I went through in some of these bays and found spots where I thought maybe the fillet could be a little bit more robust and added a little bit of sealant and, and did that. Um, so I did that on both tanks. I'm, to be honest, I'm confident that those things are really well sealed on those rib flanges. But if I saw any apparent break in the fillet, even though that's not really necessarily where the seals happen, I went ahead and redid it. So from this angle, that looks like a pretty good size uh, squeeze out. Uh, and it also looks like it goes really quickly but <laughs> this is sped up many times. That's really viscous stuff that's coming out of a, um, I, I think that maybe the opening in that syringe is on the order of maybe a 16th of an inch. It's not big at all. And uh, I, what I'm trying to get is about a 3 16th uh, bead, which I think I did successfully. Here I'm applying a small amount of sealant to the upper and lower um, rivet holes on the, the rib flanges. The ones, those are the holes that will not um, be mated up to a Z bracket on the other side. Uh, got her all flipped over. I'm doing the same thing here. I am uh, just was just adding some sealant to um, a couple more of those ribs like I had done when it was flipped over. Now we're in the bottom. And you can see at the bottom of the rib flange, that cut out there, that gap, that needs to be left free so that fuel can 
flow at the very back of the tank, which would be the lowest point, and then down toward the um, toward the quick drain. And so I'm being very careful to keep that bead of sealant just inside of the rivet line. And when the baffle gets dropped in, it'll sort of squeegee and push it into place without crowding into or obstructing that that flow path. Um, and so it worked out really well. I, I don't know how you could do this without a syringe or a Semco applicator. Trying to use a um, trying to use a popsicle stick to do that would just be a mess and frustrating and, and probably not very successful. These syringes worked out great. I'm, and they're like, I don't know what I paid for them, $2.35 a piece. So dropping the baffle in, it's a pretty simple process. And then trying to get a bunch of uh, Clecos in there to, to hold it tight and get that uh, sealant where it needs to be. Um, cause it's still a lengthy process. I think that it took me about an hour from the time I started mixing the sealant until I started putting Clecos in. That was an hour of, uh, mixing sealant, loading it into syringes and then, uh, applying it to, applying it to the tank skins and, and whatnot and getting it in there. And we get into the same thing as uh, yesterday, which is these closed end, um, rivets that need to go in those, um, I call them outboard because they're outside of the Z brackets, but really it's the upper and lower ones for all of the interior ribs. Got them in, um, still had to struggle a bit with my now two rivet pullers, but I was glad to have the backup. That actually helped quite a bit because um, there came a point where I gave up on one after removing that little bit of aluminum a couple of times and then the other one, which by the way is the older one, they're identical models, but the other one uh, got like the last five or six of them on the first pull, no problems. So it worked out. Once these are all in place, then uh, the tank will go back out to the garage and then we'll do the rest of the, the squeezed rivets. Um, hmm. I'm really anxious about uh, when we get to the, the pressure testing on this tank because I really do feel like um, it went together pretty well, but you never know. So off we go out into the garage, um, gathering supplies, and there we go. So again, as a reminder, um, every place that there is a a Z bracket um, will remain unriveted today. Um, those will wait. Those those will happen tomorrow on both tanks. Um, <clears throat> so we already did the interior ribs, those upper and lower rivets, and then on the end ribs there are four rivets each that sit outside of the Z brackets. They're AN470 um, rivets, and that's what I'm installing right now. Um, so the ends uh, look really good. Um, looking inside the tank through the access panel. They look good. Um, so get those four per end, so eight rivets set with the squeezer, and then just get in the business of running up and down the, um, the length of the skin. That's where the skin attaches to the baffle with those um, countersunk or flush rivets. Uh, getting them all loaded up. There's always a little bit of work. You see in my right hand, I've got that pick and that's what I use to kind of align holes. I'm not saying that they're not lined up, but they're not perfectly lined up. Once you have sealant in there, that changes the dimension a little bit. And so the reason that you want to get all of this riveting done while the sealant is still workable is so that, um, you can squeeze it into place by setting those rivets. And so, um, yeah, on, on, it seemed like on both of these tanks on the first pass, whether it was the top or the bottom, when I was loading up those rivets, um, almost every other hole, every third or fourth hole, I would have to use that little pick to kind of pull the skin uh, and flange a little bit to get the hole lined up for the rivet to drop in cleanly. And then when I flip it over, uh, everything's square and those ones all dropped in like nothing. So I did one pass and then, ah, I'm drilling one out. Uh, there was one that I was trying to be 
Hmm. With a with the rivet squeezer on the underneath side, there's there's a spot where the the squeezer wants to drag against one of the rivets that's set on the flange, and so I tried to back off it a little bit, and I ended up um, kind of hitting the top of that rivet half on, half off with the squeezer. So totally cosmetic, would have been okay, but it was easy enough to drill out and replace, so I did. Uh, now just going back and getting the rest of the spots. This is this is something worth noting here. When you do the first pass, you you maybe left every, you put a rivet like every fourth hole, or a Clico every fourth hole, and then you drop all the rivets in, squeeze them, and it's pretty obvious where the rivets and where they aren't because you see a rivet or you see a Clico. Once you take the Clicos out, and I think that there are 16 in there, you, once you take those 16 uh, Clicos out and drop those last 16 rivets in, it's not really that hard as you're making your next pass through to actually skip over a rivet. Uh, it's not quite as obvious where they are, and when you're looking underneath the flange right there where the tails are hanging down, it's pretty easy to skip over uh, one. And uh, <laughs> Now, that, that wouldn't lead to a leak in this case. That's not a, a sealing uh, point necessarily, but I was really careful to kind of, once I was done with both of them, to idiot check those um, to make sure that I didn't actually leave a rivet unsqueezed that will later just sort of fall out when the tank flips over. Um, so here I'm doing the second pass on the second tank, and that is gonna bring us to the end of the really big work on the fuel tanks. The second tank is gonna come out and will be done for the day, and then tomorrow it will be all about uh, just accessories and finishing it up. So that's it for this one, thanks.